that is with the right environment it can have both um, like behave as a conductor and insulator okay I don't know what just happened but unfortunately the video camera stopped recording the audio kept going and well here I am redoing this <laughs> segment again um, I'm only gonna be doing the last two segments that I recorded on the weekend and well before we get into it I've got some really exciting news and that is Tesla and full self-driving in Australia roll the credits So, with thanks to Tesla and the gong, he tweeted to Elon Musk this. Elon Musk, is there a roadmap for full self-driving in Australia? To which Elon Musk said this. Coming very soon. Right now, I imagine there's a lot of celebration and fanfare happening by Tesla fans all around this big country of ours. And my gosh, it has been a long time coming. But, I digress. Very important, if you have not already, make sure you've gotten purchased full self-driving for eight and a half thousand dollars because Elon did tweet earlier this year that November 1 there's gonna be another price hike is it gonna affect Australia maybe maybe not but nonetheless he has always said that as the technology gets better and the software gets better and the hardware gets better you get the idea it's gonna keep going up and up and up because the Teslas are working towards becoming a safe autonomous car and uh, yeah this is the first step so Super exciting stuff. Um, full self-driving in Australia means, hopefully, that your car will change lanes, you know, when you're on the freeway or by itself. Do uh, onto ramp, off to ramp uh, freeway driving, so it's going to take a bit more of your load off. And uh, maybe a van summon. But knowing the nanny state we live in, who knows? Maybe. Maybe not. All right. So let's get back to where I was before. And this, this is about, well, early this year. Tesla acquired Maxwell Technologies, who we all, we're all hoping will be adding what they are calling supercapacitors to Tesla cars in the near future. Now, you know who else is joining this game too? Bosch. Yeah, Bosch. You know, the, the guys who make like lots of different products. And as, as I've learned, Come 2020, in Australia at least, they're going to be running on renewable power. So, good job, Bosch. Anyhow, they announced a semiconductor capable, capable of providing extra range to an EV by about, well, 6%. Which, if, if I put that in perspective, like what that would mean for a Tesla Model 3, which can go, I'm going to use the WLTP cycle here, about 400 kilometers, right? You can possibly get about an additional 24, 26 kilometers or so with that 6% bonus. This, this is significant. So what is a semiconductor and how is it different to a capacitor? And by the way, I had to go research this, so you know, don't think I'm very clever or anything. But basically, a semiconductor is a substance, usually a, like a solid chemical element or compound that can conduct electricity under some conditions. Keyword there. But not others. So making it a good medium for the control of like an electrical uh, current. Typically, silicon is a good example of a semiconductor. That is, with the right environment, it can behave both as a conductor, an insulator, or a combination of the two. Get it? Semiconductor. That makes sense. Whereas a capacitor temporarily stores electrical energy in an electrical field. Take two electrical conductors, things that, you know, let electricity flow through them and separate them with an insulator. That, that's a material that doesn't let electricity flow very well. And you make a capacitor, something that can store electrical energy. Now, a capacitor is a bit like a battery, but it has a different job to do and that is to store, store energy in only a short amount of time and it can release either at milliseconds or seconds, okay? So when you think about EVs, capacitors are perfect because when you do regenerative braking, you could potentially store that energy that the motors are actually capturing and put it into these capacitors ready to use when you accelerate, okay? You're kind of saving the battery in doing so. Conversely, what Bosch has done here is they've actually found a way to 
I think the, they've infused the, um, the semiconductor with this special matrix thing. I'm going to put its name on the screen now because I forget what it's called. And um, in, in doing so, it's going to provide that 6% um, of efficiency or improvement rather to your range of an EV. Good stuff. In August, Hyundai released a version of its Sonata Hybrid EV with roof solar panels for the South Korean market. The solar energy it captures can be used to both help with propulsion as well as power features in the vehicle such as like lights and air conditioning. Earlier this year, I showed like you the, the Sono Motors EV, which has more than 248 PV panels. And in July, Toyota teamed up with like the new energy and industrial technology development organization. Try to say that quickly. And Sharp to begin trials in Japan for the EVs equipped with like solar panels on its hood, roof and boot. Yeah. Now the combined surface area of the of that car was something like 0.8 of a square meter. Now my really bad math and yeah I'm not very good at math I have to use Excel. I love Excel. Anyway I don't verge. Um, my bad math has estimated that that surface area of a solar panel. Now, knowing by the way, these panels that these guys have created are actually like running about 34, 35% efficiency. That's pretty impressive because the solar panels on my roof are only going about 15 or 20%. So that's, that's quite a good jump. But nonetheless, that size of area, I'm guesstimating they're only gonna be producing about 80 watt hours per hour. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of said the same thing twice, but you get the idea. Context for those who might not understand what I just said um, was that, you know, in the old days when you used to have like a 60 watt incandescent bulb in your roof, yeah, that would that would kind of fill a small room with some light. Well, th that just think of an 80 watt globe, all right? Or maybe, better, better example, a desk fan. Yeah, a desk fan. You know, things you can plug into the wall, little thing. They run at about 100 watt hours, you know, 100 watts per hour rather. Yeah, that's a better way of saying it. Okay, just remember, power is not energy and energy is not power. Just saying. And before I go any further, two things. Um, I forgot to change the slide behind me, so <laughs> let me do that. And put your comment down below if you think solar panels on cars are a good idea. Right back. Okay, there we go. That's, 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 that's the Sonata with the solar panel on the roof. Okay, now where was I? Uh, you're going to correct me on my bad math and uh, and yeah, basically Toyota is suggesting that their solar panels can add 32 to 46 kilometers of range per day. Yeah, that's like the average, what the average Australian drives per day. So that's like free fuel again. So rewind to yesterday's, yesterday's episode where we talked about free fuel for the Nissan Leaf 2, question mark, question mark. And this story, is this a reality? Because remember, a very, very smart man by the name of Elon Musk did suggest that um, putting solar panels on cars is a fruitless exercise. They might be garaged. They're not going to get the sun. But uh, I think maybe the tech in 2017 when he said that statement no longer applies here. And that's because, well, they're running more efficiently. They can actually recharge the, um, the battery as you're driving. That's new, that's better, that's different. <laughs> and um, also that, you know, it can run other things within the car. But remembering, we're talking 80 watts per hour here. And um, that doesn't seem like enough to me. But nonetheless, I really would like to hear your thoughts. And if you've got any questions or comments, do put them down below. And look, before I go, it seems this is a, a next day episode, I may as well answer some questions. So let's jump into them. Okay, I've just had a look at you. And well, Peter Imos, you are standing out because you're putting your comment everywhere you can. And that is, can I do a uh, a, a story about um, charging options for EVs and you know what's in the Australian marketplace and things like that? And yeah, absolutely. Um, in the meantime, because that would take me some time to do, uh, you can go check out up here somewhere and uh, I've done one 
uh, where I spoke to Charge Fox and the guys at um, uh, Tim. Tim, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Tim. <laughs> um, I'll put the logo on screen now as my apology to them. Uh, where I interview him and we talk about the range of products they have, what successes they had, what failures they had, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, I thought it was a quite a good little interview I did. Um, so please do go check that out. Um, and when will that happen? Well, crikey, I've got the Tesla Model 3 first impressions video this week that'll be coming out. Uh, almost got ready to the um, Google Home Max video thing, what it's called, you know, um, the one the screen. Home Hub Max, yeah. Google, you gotta do something about your naming conventions, just saying. Uh, what else? I've got sitting in the can, ready to go, just like I've gotta edit it. Um, I've reviewed an electric uh, lawnmower. Um, uh, Sport alert is pretty average. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, I've got a few videos lined up, so the next few weeks I'm definitely will be busy. Apologies in advance, but I'll try to get that to you in about three or four weeks time. Okay, next question. All right, next question comes from Tesla Australia, and not Australia, Australia. Yeah, because you know, that's how we say things in Australia. <laughs> and um, uh, yesterday I did a shout out to him and you know, Tesla and the uh, Gong, as well as Tesla Tom on Ludicrous Feed, uh, because these are all awesome Australians who are doing their bit to you know, increase our knowledge of what's happening in the space of renewable tech in Australia. And um, he asked like, Am I still interested in the Model 3 when the time is right for us? And definitely the answer is absolutely. Um, but time-wise, I'm thinking two to three years times by then, maybe the Model Y will be out. So maybe I'll get the Model Y because I've got a family of six. That's a better fit for it. Um, and uh, what else do you ask me? Hang on, I need to go look at the screen again. Just, I'm, I'm normally better prepared than this, just wait. Okay, he had three questions, but basically it was, are you gonna get an EV? Yeah, hopefully two to three years. Uh, what model would it be? Probably Tesla. Um, I did mention to him that I think the Volkswagen ID3 is a very compelling car, and if you've ever driven like a VW Golf, you know how awesome that thing is to drive. Um, and I, I imagine this would actually be very, very comparable, if not actually better. So um, that said, Tesla and the autopilot software can't be beat. It just cannot be beat. And I think that feature, that feature alone will draw me to Tesla. So there's your answer. All right, so I reckon that will do for today. So again, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Consider subscribing, give it a thumbs up or anything like that, sharing your socials. Um, and if you really wanna help the channel out, support me up there on Patreon. Uh, you get behind the scenes perks, polls, early access content, and more. So um, yeah, for a coffee a month or more, up to you. Anyway, you know what the saying goes, be good, be green.